Hello, uh, welcome back to the vlog. Here I am again, uh, back in the office. And uh, last week I read a short passage as a bit of a practice for me, ready for when I'm doing a reading next week. And uh, I've had some good feedback. I was quite uh, surprised and pleased to get uh, good feedback. People saying that they thought it was quite exciting and compelling was one of the words that people use. So I was uh, so pleased with that i'm going to push the push the envelope a little bit more and give a slightly longer reading today which will be my pretty much my final rehearsal ready for next week's big event where i have to read the same passage to i think 10 or 12 other authors from around the globe uh, i don't know any of these authors particularly i don't think that they're of particular fame or fortune but still peer pressure etc it'll be interesting to uh, to see what other people find of my work and, and the delivery of it so uh, bear with me while i try and read this i'm going to try and do it without my glasses on because uh, i'm a bit vain and i don't like putting them on so if i do stumble i apologize in advance so uh, not looking straight at the camera so here goes diving straight in pretty much from where i left off on the passage last week back in pod one on his one final test Brody believed wholehearted he, wholeheartedly he was ready, as on all 665 previous tests, regardless of minor resultant data conflict, he had always got 100% categorical physical success. Why then was he suddenly feeling sick to his stomach and reeling within the pod? Before he could answer this question, or his gut could regurgitate his breakfast, he passed out cold and fell to the floor. An unknown period of time passed. He eventually awoke and got shakily to his feet. The sweat was dripping from his brow as the maglock on the transportation pod door spun, finally clicked and the door slid back. A wave of emotion coursed through his system and he felt faint again as he realised he wasn't back in his lab or even in the return pod where he should have been. He was still in pod one and it was the outside environment that seemed to have changed. This was a fact that contradicted all his understanding of the science he was trying to further. Both pods were bolted down to their earthing plates and so couldn't move. Brody, dazed, automatically tried to comfort himself with humour and spoke aloud with a mixture of sarcasm and worry. Did the earth move for you, babe? With nobody there to hear his jest, he couldn't even muster a smile himself in response to his frivolous question and so stared blankly out of the pod. Neither his normal predilection for humour nor the habitual thinking about Charlie were of any comfort. Sorry, for of any comfort now. He'd fallen head over heels the day they met, but despaired at the chance of her ever reciprocating the feeling. He now heaved a huge sigh of no going back proportions, then very tentatively took his first Armstrong-esque small step out of the pod and he definitely wasn't mentally prepared for the giant leap into the complete unknown that he was just about to take. Incredibly, what he now saw in front of him as he stepped outside the pod was a wide beach scene, with what looked like a huge Viking ship in the distance. What the f... He said it out loud, but his words trailed away to nothing. Taking a moment or two to steady himself from the dizzying experience, he stepped cautiously further out. With his feet in casual loafers, he sank into the crisp, sugary sand. It's real. The mere thought was astounding, let alone the reality. It's actually real. His anxious thoughts spilled from his lips now, but still he bent and touched the sand in disbelief, running his fingers through it like an excited child, a child at the seaside for the first time, having never seen the sea, let alone a Viking ship. It wasn't excitement he felt, though. This was just not right. He knew only too well that he should by rights still be in his lab, returning from a 25-second, 2 billion mile phased transportation that he had successfully completed so many times before. What's happened? What could possibly have gone wrong? As he started to try to compute the possibilities while thoughts were randomly jostling for position in his mind, he was promptly interrupted by the sound of the transportation pod door beginning to slide shut behind him. Letting go of all the computations, he turned to see the whole pod fading from vision. He desperately dived, goalkeeper-like, clutching at the disintegrating image. He grabbed only air as he landed firmly on the soft sand where the pod had previously stood. Panic now began to edge into his mind. 
So I'm going to leave it there on a nice edge, which is uh, the end of the passage that I would have read. And the bit that I did last week would have gone with that and a few other bits and pieces, which make a 10 minute run. So I'm hoping that I'll get some more feedback from this today. It's a little bit longer, so I hope you stayed with me. And uh, if you liked it, head yourself over to Amazon and get a copy of Breaking the Tranquility of Solitude and read it for yourself. Thanks very much for listening tonight. And um, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next week. Take care now. Bye bye.